In this lecture, we're going to cover the conformations of mono and di-substituted cyclohexanes. We've already discussed the fact that a cyclohexane ring is going to adopt a chair conformation so that it can have perfect tetrahedral carbons with 109.5 bo uh, bond angles. We also talked about the fact that the cyclohexane ring can flip and when the ring flips, equatorial substituents become axial and axial substituents become equatorial. So let's look at an example of a monosubstituted cyclohexane ring. We're going to look at methyl cyclohexane. When we draw methyl cyclohexane in the chair conformation, we can put the methyl substituent either in the axial or the equatorial position. So we will start with that methyl substituent in the axial position. If the methyl on this carbon is in the axial position, the hydrogen then will be in the equatorial position. If we ring flip this cyclohexane ring, the axial substituents become equatorial and vice versa. So what I'm going to do first is number my carbon so I can keep track of them in the ring flipped version of this molecule. I'll start uh, with my methyl group carbon as number one. And now when I ring flip this, I'm going to keep track of all my carbons using these numbers. Remember that the head of my chair, which in this case is carbon 1, will become the foot, and the foot of my chair, carbon 4, will become the head. So here's my ring flipped version, and I'll put my numbers in so we can keep track of those carbons. Again, the easiest to identify will be the head and the foot, which are now reversed, and then I can fill in my numbers, remembering that uh, I'm numbering, in this case, going counterclockwise. So now I've numbered my ring flipped cyclohexane, and now I can add my substituents. Remember that in this case, my methyl group is pointing up on the left as axial. It's going to be up on the right, but now the up position on carbon 1 is, is equatorial. My hydrogen on the left is down, so on the right structure it is also going to be down, but now on carbon 1 my down position is axial. So this is the correct structure of the ring flip version of my cyclohexane drawn, and now my methyl group is equatorial. I would strongly recommend making a model of this cyclohexane ring and performing the ring flip so that you can convince yourself that that methyl group that starts out axial will become equatorial, and when you reverse the ring flip, uh, it will go from equatorial to axial. Now that we've drawn these two conformers of methyl cyclohexane, we need to determine which is more stable. We can determine which is more stable using Newman projection drawings to allow us to look at the type of interactions that are involved in each one of these conformers of methyl cyclohexane. When we're choosing how to draw a Newman projection, you can choose uh, two different views. You need to make sure, though, that you're choosing uh, one of the bonds that includes uh, the carbon with the methyl substituent. So just to simplify things, I am going to choose to look at my cyclohexane ring down the carbon 6 to carbon 1 bond in this direction. And remember that with a cyclohexane ring, there are always two bonds that are parallel, so we'll also be looking down the bond between, carbon, between carbons 4 and carbon 3. So let's draw this Newman projection. I've drawn the back carbons, which are carbons 1 and 3. And carbons 1 and 3 are going to have a bond to carbon 2, and that bond is pointing down. My front carbons, which are carbon 6 and carbon 4, are going to have a bond to carbon 5, which is pointing up. And now I need to draw in the rest of my substituents, which are mostly hydrogens except for on carbon 1. Remember that these are all going to be spaced around the central carbon at about 120 degrees. They're going to be evenly spaced um, because they're all staggered and because these bonds are 109.5. And so this is what all my substituents are going to look like, and now I have to fill them in properly. I'm going to start by numbering each of my carbons. The two carbons in the front will be carbons 4 and carbon 6. six. The two carbons in the back will be carbons 3 and carbon 1. And the two in the middle will be 2 and 5. 5 is between 4 and 6. And 2 is between carbons 1 and 3. And so, except for carbon 1, all of the substituents on the rest of the carbons will be hydrogen, so I'm going to draw those in. And now I have to determine where to put my methyl substituent on carbon 1. And if you make this model and you look down carb, uh, the bonds between carbons 4 and 3 and carbon 6 and 1, it'll be very easy to decide where to place this methyl group. The other way you can think about it 
is um, if you imagine looking down that bond, your methyl group is pointing straight up. And it's very obvious when we look at our Newman projection which of the two bonds on carbon-1 is pointing straight up. It's going to be this one. And so this is where our methyl group goes, leaving the last substituent spot for hydrogen. If you're not convinced that that is how that Newman projection would look, I strongly recommend making this model and convincing yourself of that. Now let's draw the Newman projection for the equatorial methyl cyclohexane. Again, I've drawn my two back carbons. I'm going to number my cyclohexane ring. So my two back carbons are drawn, which in this case are carbons 2 and carbons 4, because I'm, again, I'm going to look down a bond containing my methyl group, and I'm going to choose, just for uh, to simplify things, carbons 5 to 4 and carbons 1 to 2. And so the back carbons I've drawn in my Newman projection are 2 and 4. They're going to have a bond to carbon 3, which is going to be down. My front carbons are carbons 5 and carbons 1, and they are going to have a bond to carbon 6, which is pointing up. Then I'm going to draw in the rest of my substituents at 120 degrees from the ones I've drawn so far. Then I'm going to number my carbons just like I did before. Remember the carbons in the front are carbons 5 and carbons 1. The carbons in the back are 2 and 4. And then it's fairly easy to figure out which is 3 and which is 6. Now that I've numbered my carbons, I can fill in my substituents. All of them will be hydrogen except for one of the ones on carbon 1. And as I try to determine where to put my methyl on carbon 1, remember that that methyl is pointing out to the side, the hydrogen is pointing down, and so hopefully that will help you figure out that the methyl group should go here and the hydrogen should go here. If you're not convinced of that, again, make the model. Look at this Newman projection on that model and make sure that you can convince yourself that this is the proper placement of the substituents on carbon 1. Now remember, the point of this exercise was to, to determine whether that methyl substituent is more stable if it's in the axial or the equatorial position. And to do that, we can look at the conformations on these Newman projections and compare them to what we learned about Newman projections for linear alkanes. We know that the most stable conformation for any alkane is going to be anti. The least stable is going to be totally eclipsed. Now we have all staggered conformations here, and so what that means is the least stable conformation we can have is gauche. Remembering what that means is um, when the two largest groups are staggered but as close together as possible, which is the interaction we have in the axial methyl group. The methyl group and carbon 5 are gauche to one another. In the equatorial methyl group, that methyl group is anti to the closest large group on carbon 2. What that tells us then is that the equatorial methyl group is more stable than the axial methyl group because placing that substituent, that methyl group, in the equatorial position allows it to be anti from the carbons in the ring rather than gauche as it is when it's axial. And this is a pattern we're going to see all the time in cyclohexane rings. Putting substituents in the equatorial position puts them anti to the carbons in the ring, making them more stable. So the equatorial position is always going to be the more stable position for the larger substituents. Another name for this gauche interaction is a 1,3 diaxial interaction. It's called a 1,3 diaxial interaction because it, is, it involves two axial substituents that are on carbons with a 1,3 relationship to one another. So for example, we're talking about the interaction between the methyl group on carbon 1 and the hydrogen on carbon 5, both of which are in axial positions and are three carbons away from one another. There is a similar interaction between the hydrogen on carbon 3 and the methyl group on carbon 1. And you can actually draw the Newman projection down carbons 3 to 2 and 5 to 6 and be able to see this in the Newman projection as well. And so you should start to be able to recognize these 1,3 diaxial interactions that I've shown here on the cyclohexane rings. And you can see that that 1,3 diaxial interaction is not possible for the equatorial methyl because it's not axial. These gauche interactions, or these 1,3 diaxial interactions, become even more important when the groups are both larger than hydrogen, such as in this cis 13 dimethylcyclohexane, which looks like this. And if we draw out the chair conformation, you'll see that you can put those two methyl groups either both axial or both equatorial. So here they're both axial 
if I flip the ring, all of my axial substituents become equatorial. And hopefully you can see that on the left structure we have a very unfavorable 1-3 diaxial interaction between the two methyls that is not present in the structure where both of the methyls are equatorial. And so the diequatorial substituted cyclohexane ring flip conformer is more stable than the conformer in which both of those methyl groups are axial. What if we look at the trans isomer? When we draw the trans isomer in the chair conformation, one of the methyls will be axial and one will be equatorial. Again, if you're not convinced of this, make the model of trans 1,3 dimethylcyclohexane, put it in the chair conformation and see that no matter how you flip the ring, one is always going to be equatorial and one will be axial. So one methyl group will always be axial and one will always be equatorial. This is in contrast to the cis isomer, where one conformer has both methyl groups axial and one has both equatorial. Because cis 1,3 dimethylcyclohexane has access to the most stable conformer, it is the most stable isomer as well because it can access the most stable conformer. So cis 1,3 dimethylcyclohexane is more stable than the trans 1,3 dimethylcyclohexane because that cis 1,3 dimethylcyclohexane can access this conformation where both methyl groups are equatorial at the same time. Now let's consider the 1,2 dimethylcyclohexane example. The cis isomer will look like this. When we draw it in a chair conformation, both methyl groups will be up. One way to draw that is like this, where both of my methyl groups are in the upmost position on carbons that are right next to one another in a 1,2 orientation. And in this case, one of them is axial and one of them is equatorial. When we draw the ring flip, the one that was axial becomes equatorial, and the one that was ex equatorial becomes axial. In the cis 1,2 dimethylcyclohexane isomer, there's always going to be one methyl that is axial and one that is equatorial. In the trans isomer, one methyl group will be up and one methyl group will be down. When we draw that as a chair, one methyl group will be up, in this case axial, and one will be down, also axial. When we draw the rim flip, since both were axial, they will now both be equatorial. And so in the trans 1,2 dimethylcyclohexane isomer, we have a less stable and a more stable isomer. The isomer with both of the methyl groups equatorial is the most stable of any of the four I've drawn, and therefore trans 1,2 dimethylcyclohexane has access to the most stable conformer, and therefore is the most stable of the two isomers. So all of our examples so far of disubstituted cyclohexane rings have had two of the same substituent. What happens when we look at larger substituents? The larger the group, the higher the preference it has for being in an equatorial position. If there are two substituents and they are different sizes, and both cannot be equatorial, the more stable conformer will have the larger group in the equatorial position. Let's look at an example of this. Cis 1-ethyl 4-methyl cyclohexane, which looks like this. Now let's draw it in a chair. This is one conformer of the chair conformation of this molecule. Now we'll draw the ring flip, where our methyl group that was axial has now become equatorial, and our ethyl group that was equatorial has now become axial. The conformer that has the largest group equatorial, the one on the left, is going to be the most stable conformer because the larger the group is, the more preference it has to be in the equatorial position because those 1,3 diaxial interactions only get worse as the group gets larger.